sound better. In this video, we're going to build up the bass, and for that, we're going to use Serum, our beloved synth. So for OCR A, I want to choose an analog waveform or a wavetable, and it is called the ESR entry. And on OCR B, I'm going to go with another analog wavetable, and it is called BWM LPF. Okay, so this is it. Very nice stuff. Now, on OCR A, I want to use a wavetable instead of three different waveforms. So let's go to uh, like clicking on this pencil tool into the wavetable editor. And on Morph, let's click on Morph Spectral. So this is going to create a very nice wavetable from our three different waveforms and set the wavetable position to about, I don't know, like 11 o'clock or something. Okay, and this time we're going to use an FM from B. So Oscillator B is going to modulate our sound, frequency modulate basically, or Oscillator A sound. So because of that, we don't need the level, so we don't need any volume going out from Oscillator B, but instead we want to make a synchronize, um, which, you know, gives some form and shifting basically on the sound. So this is how it sounds now. This is weird, I know. Let's use an LFO to make it a little more exciting. And let's uh, lifeless. So something like that. Let's click on envelope mode or trigger mode and one per four will be fine. Okay, so drop on the level of OCR A and onto the wavetable position, wavetable position. So this will give some very nice movement, very, very nice life to the sound. And the very important part here is using a low pass filter on a pretty high resonance and because we are going to distort the sound a little the high resonance will react very very nice to the distortion so let's drop le for one onto the cutoff and uh, yes it is on trigger mode very nice let's make it a little back so we just want to stay on the very filtered kind of sound and uh, the distortion will bring out some very nice harmonics so this is how it sounds now Okay, this is not bad. The next thing that I want to do is go to the effects and add the compression. Before the compression, let's add a distortion, like crank it up to about two o'clock and everything will be fine except the post filter because we already have some very weird frequencies. So I'm sure that you can hear these crackle noises. So this is what I'm going to eliminate with the filter and let's drop the LFO on the filter and pull it back to about 100 Hertz, but crank up the modulation range to the maximum. Okay, this is nice. Add some more deep tones to it by using a phaser so pull back the rate we don't need any any uh, movement on the phaser and let's set about this these settings on on the phaser the deeper the better and right now it is deep enough now the next thing that i want to add like put this all stuff before the compressor is an equalizer and just, you know, decrease some of the elements that we don't really like. And we always need to start with the three, four hundred hertz of area. Okay, something like that will be fine. Maybe it is a little too much, so let's pull back the gain on both of the EQ dots. Okay, everything is fine with the effect. Now, if you want, you can tweak the synchronize and the FM to create a very different tone for the bass.
Now let's draw in the midis. So let's create the midi clip and I want to see where the kicks are. Okay, so here they are. Let's draw midi, select and shift control M. And let's use F0 because this is the key of our song. F0 and we should follow a rhythm, something similar to this. Which is already not bad, but what I want to do is activate the automation and uh, click on the filter cutoff. And I would say let's pull back this short note. I mean, pull back the cutoff only on this short note because that would make some very nice difference to the groove. Okay. Okay, add the new automation channel and just copy the automation on the cutoff all over to the to the groove. Okay, very nice. And let's call this bass. Now, maybe I would add some more EQing because uh, there are middle and middle top frequencies there that I don't really like, so let's try to EQ, EQ them out. And the next thing that I want to add is a utility tool to make everything mono on the low end, so everything below 120 hertz. And the other thing is uh, just make some side chaining on the bass, which is very important because, especially on this section, you don't want to let the bass ruin up and mess up the kick, especially the low end of the kick. So what I want to do is add another automation channel and just select this range where the kick hits, pull back the volume on the tool, I mean on the utility tool, and copy it everywhere the kick hits. So something like that, select this range, control D all to the end, and boom, we are having a very nice sidechain, well, I would say manual sidechain effect using only the utility tool. And this is a very nice mixing tool because you won't be able to hear the bass under the kick, which is very nice because, you know, it will cut, uh, it will cut through a lot better in the mix. Okay, this is crazy enough, and the next video we are going to build up the synth for this groove. <laughs> 